guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. And if you're new here and visiting our channel for the first time, this is something I do with my husband, Chris. We take thrift store found items and we make them over here on our channel. And we share our vision and the processes process with you all of what we do to these items. So in today's video, I share with you thrift hauls and thrift with me's throughout the month. So I got to not only do I share them, but I share the process of how I make over the items. So this is part two. I'm trying to keep it a little bit, not as long of videos as winter time. So this is part of my thrift haul makeover. I'm doing a set of three here. So you all can enjoy your family and be an open back up and enjoy the summer. So these are a little bit shorter videos. So in today's video, I'm making over some metal items using some textured paint. And these are items that are part of my monthly thrift hauls. I usually do a thrift with me or thrift haul once a week. So yeah, I gotta make the items over. I get quite a quite a hoard going of items that need to make over. And it is, when you're making over items, it is easier to do a whole grouping because paint is always drying. So there's always something waiting to be worked on. So I hope you enjoy today's video. So here's a portion of my weekly thrift haul items that I have collected throughout the month and I am just happy to be able to take time and finally get some of these items done and I love sharing with you all what my inspiration what my vision for these pieces are I try to separate my pieces out in, as you see, candlesticks, clocks, texture paint, what I think I'm going to be doing with these type of pieces. Just so when I'm painting this mass quantity of pieces that I kind of have a flow going on. Or even as simple as just the metals and just separating metals out. It's something that is similar in what the items are that I have thrifted. So as doing thrift flips, thrift store makeovers, the unglamorous part is having to remove all the tags, all the price tags, all the store tags. I know I have a little bit of a pet peeve of people painting over tags. Nothing says a flipped item like painting over a price tag or a store tag. So just take the time to remove any of the tags. I'm not saying that it's always the easiest task. I wish I could link this Harbor Freight tool that I found because I absolutely love it. It was just an in-store pickup. I tried to find a link for you all, but just the sharpness of it and the way that it is tilted, it just really removes tags nicely. Then every once in a while when you remove a tag, it just leaves sticky behind. So uh, just some lemon oil and yep, I ended up thrifting this for 99 cents. And that just oil just releases that and gets that sticky right off. Because sometimes even the cleaner does not get it off. And then there's always that if it's a metal item, just heat it up with a heat gun or a blow dryer. And usually it will release that sticky and be easily removed. So of course my hopes for when I'm thrifting clocks that I can remove the mechanism, I can remove the glass, the face, but that's not always achievable. So it does have some screws, so I'm seeing how much of this I can take apart, especially since I know that I want to be spray painting these. I'll take what I can get, I can remove the back, but the plastic is glued in there, so I won't be able to remove that. And of course, there goes my little problem of having to remove tags. Yep, I'm going to take the tags off of this too. Now the same thing with this one. I'm going to be removing this uh, backing on there. There's screws, so I should be able to remove it. All it does actually is remove the back and I can't get, I can't take the mechanism off and I can't take the face off. So, hmm, okay, well I'll just have to tape over stuff. So both of these clocks have plastic faces, so I definitely don't want to get any paint on there. I don't want to have to try to scrape it off because I don't want to take a chance of scraping up the plastic. So I'm just using some Dollar General 2-inch tape, masking tape, and a sharp X-Acto knife. Just putting that tape on there and then running around the circle of the face with the X-Acto knife to cut that tape off. Now that I got all these items prepped and taken apart and taped, I know you probably all think, why did you tape before you cleaned? I like to leave a little bit of that dirt on there that helps release that tape off the sticky. And that way, if it's a little bit wet, then the tape 
the tape doesn't stick if it's a little bit wet. So that's why I tape first before I clean. We all have our little ways that we do stuff. So yep, just some super clean and concentrate in some hot water and just getting all the grime, grease, whatever is on these thrifted items, getting them all clean so they can thoroughly accept the paint. Then I got everything detagged. I got it cleaned. I got it. It's now dried. I'm putting it on boards so I can carry it into our spray room to start spraying on it. I usually always start off with a good undercoat of Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black. This just covers up any of the original color that any of the items, especially these red, <laughs> these red apples and that very gold fruit. And so that I just like this is the way that I like to do things. It just get a good base of black. It covers up everything. It makes a nice even coat and it's got a primer there in there. So it's a great base. Now before flipping these over, I'm going to get these sealed in with some clear coat, the Rust-Oleum and matte. That'll protect that black paint. And now I can flip them over and get what I did to the one side. Now I got to do it to the other side. So moving on to painting these items white, I'm going to be using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and using my True Coat Graco handheld sprayer. When mixing the paint up for the sprayer, I just pour it into the container. And as you see, when I lift up the stir stick, it kind of sets, the paint sets on top of it, which is called worming. And then as I add water, what I'm looking for is that not to have any worming anymore. So they say about a 10% ratio, but I just keep adding water as I go, making sure that the paint is not laying on top of itself, that it's totally just always blending in with the paint and becoming one. Now this sprayer has a lot of power, so I get to stand way back, and but I definitely love how it gets items covered. With the sprayer, I usually can achieve in two coats, so I'm on to my second coat now. I'd rather put a thin coat, get a lot covered, but I don't want so much that it's going to be drippy and runny, especially with watered down paint. I noticed that if you stand too close with the sprayer, yep, you will get a lot of drip. So this is just something I've learned with the sprayer, but I do love how it covers. Now for these items, I imagine them being that cement, that textured paint. So we are going to be giving these a new look with some textured paint. If you're unfamiliar with what texture paint is, it is a paint baking soda ratio. So it kind of leaves that cement feeling on an item. So it's a 50-50 paint ratio and then I just stir it so there's no clumps of the baking soda. Yes, not only do I have a turntable in our spray room, but yep, I do put these on a little Lazy Susan turntable as I'm painting them also. This just helps you be able to move these objects with minimal touching that wet paint. Now, I can't say that these apples and bananas and pears are very easy to paint. Yep, you can get that paint on there, that paint sticks, but as it goes to setting them down, they kind of like to roll where they like to roll. So I just decided, you know, just that's how they roll. So I'll just get as much as I can painted and let them fall to the side that they want to. <laughs> When it came to the smaller apples, I switched over to that little or brush because, oh my goodness, I would have just been pushing these right out of my fingertips. When I was deciding what color to make the bottom of that 
basket, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to make it cement. They're all the, all the apples in it are going to be cement, so why not? Why not just have it match? Because the apples are going to be laying right on it. Now when I move on to coat number two, I don't add any more baking soda. I just take that mixture that I already had and I add I add more paint right into it. This way I'm not getting it overly textured. I guess I have a textured issue. It all depends on what kind of texture you're looking for. So when I move on to my second and final coat, I just that's what I do. I just mix it in really well and then proceed to paint it on. I usually let it to let my texture paint sit overnight, let it completely dry before moving on to the step. So now I'm going on to my Waverly White Wax and I'm going to bring out some of those details in these pieces. So I just use a waxing brush to apply it and then a cloth to wipe it, wipe off the excess. Definitely going over where the, like the number two on that was. I don't want to go into those cracks. I want that to emphasize that number two. So this is what really makes it look like cement, adding that white wax over this gray paint. Oh my gosh, it just, as you're applying it with that waxing brush, it just gets into all those detail areas and then wiping it off gently, just leaving it in those little crevices and the little details just really gives it that cement look. Now I'll move on to the white pieces that I want to distress. And oh, I am so excited to get to do these crosses because these crosses have so much detail. And this is why I absolutely love that Rust-Oleum chalk paint. It's just so easy to distress. So I just take a wet wipe, a wet cloth, something damp, and then I just rub it over those areas that I want that black that I spent that time painting black. And that's why I use that top coat over it. So I'm not taking that black and making a gray mucky mess. It just just that wet cloth and taking off some of that weight or that rust-oleum white paint just pops these details and now i move on to all the other pieces but just like these candlesticks you just they have so much detail i'm going to run that wet wipe wet wipe over them and just pick the areas that i want those details to pop after I get all the items that I have distressed the way that I want them, I've tweaked them, um, I make sure that that wet damp cloth reactivates and kind of leaves the paint wet. So I wait till the paint is dry again. And then I go in and seal that chalk paint in with some Rust-Oleum and clear mat. And for this textured paint and that putting that white wax, I also like to seal these in also using the clear mat. So I chose not to put any kind of decal on the bottom plate of this just because all the apples are sitting on it and I colored it to match. So now I'm just gluing that piece back in using some Starbond thick CA glue. So I really try not to forget little pieces like this. Now this piece I wasn't going to be spraying. I just wanted to pop that has such a beautiful piece of paper with that beautiful flower in the middle. But I just think if I paint a frame, a black frame around this, it's just going to draw your eyes into that flower a little bit more and make it pop. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just taping off. There's a little indentation where the frame is on this galvanized that I'm just taking some Dollar Tree masking tape and just taping off that area so I can have a clean, crisp line. Now y'all don't pay any attention to the coffee that I spilled on my way out to the shop. I should not have been trying to drink coffee as I'm walking to the shop. Yep, um, should have put my cape on so you did not, my apron on so you did not see my spillage on the front of my shirt. But let's get back to this craft. So after I got that masking tape on, I'm just going to take the exacto knife and cut off and making sure my edges are nice and straight also. And I'm just going to use some Waverly in the ink black. I love this stuff. I know. I hope they don't get rid of the Waverly. So far, I can still find it at my area Walmarts. So I, every time I go in, I buy another bottle or two. Me, it's okay. If you're going to use it, it's not a hoard, right? So I'm just going in and painting this frame black. Now, it's probably going to take me two coats just the way that the this um, galvanized is shiny. 
When it comes to black pieces, black metal pieces, even though I've top coated it, there's just something about putting a little bit of this antiquing wax over it that one, it makes it really smooth and soft, and two, it just calms down that stark black, just almost gives it a little aged look. So what did you guys think of today's thrift haul flips? Did you like the clocks? Did you like the texture paint? Oh, those apples. Oh my goodness. I just absolutely enjoyed finding a basket full of apples for 309 and be able to make them over. So I hope I have inspired you guys in any way to look at thrift store finds, thrifted items, meaning garage sales, estate sales. It doesn't always have to come necessarily from a thrift store. And it could be items just laying around your own home that you want to make over. So thanks again for watching today's video. And if you're, as always, if you were part of our YouTube family, Thank you so much, and if you're checking out this content for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscription button along with the notification bell if you like this kind of content, and we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.